Right, we're back on this one. So last week we put the rods in, cut concrete piles in, we put the weave membrane down. John went round and he levelled off all the nuts. They're all locked off. What we'll do now, um, we're going to drill this steel channel. It's 100 mil by 50 mil channel. We're using this Evolution mag drill, which is spot on for the job. Uh, we're going to drill a series of holes in there so that they'll drop over the steel rods. And then we're also going to cut them off with the grinder as well. And I'll show you what we're going to do with them. Um, so this is Evolution drill. It's a bit noisy, but it does the job. There you go, so that's that's a 26, 26, 20, 26 mil hole drilled in that steel. Um, like I say, we'll chop it all up now and we'll drop it on these rods. Thank you. So, John's now drilled the steel. We're now going to cut the steel with this 9 inch grinder with a metal cutting blade. Um, you need to be putting goggles on for this and these leather gloves will stop it burning through as well. What we're going to do is cut all these up into 6 inch strips and then sit them on the rods. We're now going to drill the timbers. So we put the 4 by 3s These 4 by 3s have been pressure treated, so they're never going to rot. So if you sit them by the rods like that, transfer the line on there, and then find your centre point, and that's where we'll be drilling the holes. We're going to use that Makita drill there with a 26mm auger bit in it. Uh, the rod's 24mm, so the 26mm will give you just enough clearance to get the rod through even if you weren't completely plumb when you put the rods in it doesn't matter when you go through with the drill what I like to do is go through and then go through a little bit of an angle left and right just to give a bit of slack on it Yeah, I've gone through there at a little bit of an angle either way and that just gives it enough slack, slack on all there for it to go through quite easily. So I've drilled the hole, so what I'm going to do now, because we tighten the nut down on there, I'm going to notch out. So what I've done, I've set this depth for this blade to about 20 mil on this uh, Makita circular saw there. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to score it across. Like so, and then what I will do then, I will find my chisel and hammer. Um, as you can see, we, we look after as tools here. It's my best chisel that for chopping out hinges. So if we roll it on its side. Just go like that, roll it over again. And then that will then allow for your nut to be compressed down and when your floor goes over it, um, we won't have to notch out the floor. Um, and this is for my Russian friend, Sergey. Two pencils today, Sergey. Hope you're having a good day, my friend. So there you can see I'm putting the timber, the 4 by 3 on top of the threaded bar. You might just have to wiggle a few of the threaded bars to get them through. Um, and when they start going through, they just want a little bit of a tap down with that. A heavy hammer, lump hammer, sledgehammer, whatever you've got to hand. So there's John tightening them down to the shoe. So what you've got there is your double threaded nut on the bottom, if you can see that. Your steel shoe and your treated fiber free on top of there, which is then bolted down. And then we'll go along and cut the top of them rods off as well. So that's the front one in, the back one in. The side one's going in now. So if you get that down on top like that, sit it above there. And what I'm going to do now is strike a line on there and cut that off, cut the other end off so it drops down and then I'll screw it through to secure it. Right, so the perimeter and the centre timbers are in. They've all been bolted down. What we're going to do now, we're going to screw through there and we're going to chop these ends off to secure them. We're going to use these 250mm Torquex screws, this uh, Makita impact driver. And... <laughs> That makes light work of that. I mean, it, it's it's latest Makita out is that, but it's not as good as John's Milwaukee, which should probably put that screw in, in half the time. Wouldn't it, John? So 
what we're going to do now, I'm going to go around with grinder and I'm going to cut all the top up bolts off and I'm going to cut them timbers off and then that will be the perimeter of the framing and then we're going to drop these 4 2 joists in. Thank you. So what John's doing there now is fixing the slate batten to the bottom of the joist uh, that'll stop the insulation from dropping through. So we've dropped all our joists in there. We we'll use these joist hangers which will now nip off and nail over like such. And then we'll infill all them with insulation then that 100 mil that we've got over there. Okay we're infilling the spaces now with this um, 100 mil foil back rigid insulation so it's like a kingspan type board. So what you want to do the 400 spaces so I lock my finger at 400 there. I will drag it down like such and then what you need to do then is when you saw it we're using an old saw but if you keep your saw quite low rather than steep you, you, won't, you know you'll, you'll do a relatively straight square cut and that's it 400 so that, that'll drop in there um, and we'll board it all so the 100 mm insulation is in we'll then put a breathable membrane over the top of that we're then putting the 22 mil Erga chipboard protect flooring on. We use that, it's the best on the market. It's got a protective covering as well. That can, it can stay outside in the rain for six weeks and it'll be fine. Um, we're gonna glue it together with this polyurethane glue. We normally use five minute glue, but I didn't have none this morning. So we're on 30 minute glue, but it is what it is. And we're gonna screw them down with these 60 mil screws using the impact driver. We'll knock them together with this block of wood and a lump hammer, get the joints all nice and tight. Um, the reason why we screw it rather than nail it is because if you nail it, it tends to squeak. So we like to screw it so there's no squeaky floor. Um, and that'll be it, basically. So we're going to cover the full floor in this 22mm Ager Protect, the breathable membrane, and the 100mm insulation as well. Okay, so we've. Um Put our 22mm Erga chipboard protect on top of there. It's all been glued and screwed. So just to recap the base, we've dug the piles, put the piles in, concrete piles with the threaded bars on. We cut the shoes and drilled them. And we've put this 4 by 3 timber right round the perimeter and one across the middle as well. And then we've put our 4 by 2 green treated joists on, on joist hangers there, all screwed through. And we've put slate battens underneath to carry the insulation. We've then dropped 100mm foil back insulation into the into the spaces we've then put um, a breathable membrane on top of that and then we've covered with Ager 22 mil protects as i say it's best on market and we use it simply because um, it can be left out in rain and it's not an issue so that concludes the base um, if you on youtube if you'd like to subscribe and like if you have any comments drop me a comment and i'll try and reply to them um, but that that is the base from start to finish the base so now tomorrow we're going to start on the walls and we'll get the walls up and we should get them OSB'd as well and wrapped and that'll be tomorrow. Thank you.